for fear. Antidotes for fear. Amen? Praise God. What is an antidote? An antidote is a cure. Yes. So if, say, a snake bites you, they have antivenom. It's an antidote for the snake bite. You understand? Amen. Antidotes for fear. Let's turn our Bible to Colossians chapter 1. 16 through 17. Colossians chapter 1, 16 through 17. Let's turn the microphone down here. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. The word of God says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things. Somebody say all things. All things. I say including me. Including all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. Always when I'm talking about faith, usually I bring the scripture. Because everything that we're looking at. Everything before, everything that's invisible was created by him and for him, including yourself. Amen. So what's the first antidote for fear? First thing, you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Write these down. I'm going to ask you about it later. Amen. What is the antidote of fear? Number one. Uh, antidotes for fear. Number one, you have to give your life to Jesus. Amen. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The word of God says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. Somebody say, greater is he that is in me than everything. Yes. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than, than he that is in the world. Amen. Greater is he that is you, King of kings, Alpha and the Omega, sits above every principality and power, all things created by him and for him. When you give your life to Jesus and Jesus begins to dwell inside of you, let 10,000 witches come to your door. No fear. Why? Because the King of kings is inside. Amen. The Lion of the tribe of Judah is inside. Not just inside of your house, but inside of you when you go to work. Not just inside of your house, but inside of you when you go into your car. Amen. So you don't have to feel. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Yes. How many fallen angels? We don't know. Is it millions? Is it billions? One third of the angels fell. They're here. So people want to walk around always afraid of the devil. Afraid of demons. Afraid of principalities. But with all those billions of demons that hate you, why did they kill you in your mother's womb? Why are you still here? Because they cannot do it without the permission of God. Amen. Millions and billions of demons. Can you protect yourself while you sleep? How did you wake up this morning? It's because he that is in you is greater than the ones that want to kill you. It's greater than your enemies. Stop worrying. Stop worrying about all kind of things when God tells you to go, go. I'm not saying don't pray. I'm not saying don't be responsible. I'm not saying don't fast. But don't fear. Amen? Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say, he that is in me yes. is greater than he that's in the world. Yes. Amen. Amen. So number one fear, an antidote for fear is you have to give your life to Jesus. What's number two? You have to trust and know how big your God is. You have to trust and know how big your God is. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 46. Psalm chapter 46, 1 through 3. Amen. Amen. God is our refuge. Do you believe it? And strength. A very present help in trouble. Were you ever in a situation where you didn't have strength to help yourself, but you're still here? Yes. yes. Has anybody been sick? 
Yes. Where you didn't have a way to get from one bed to the refrigerator because you were so thirsty. But yet, you're still here. Yes. Was it by your strength? No. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will I not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Look at your neighbor and say, do not fear. Say it to your other neighbor, don't be afraid. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. I was in Sierra Leone, as our mommy's about to go. Amen? And there's a ferry that crosses to the airport. And they advise us that we should go, don't go on the last ferry, but we made a mistake and we went on the last, we went, tried to go on the last one. So there were some government workers that advised the ferry not to move until they come. So my flight is coming. We're all on the thing, but we have to wait for two or three big men. So now we have to say, we're going to be late. We have to get off. And the only way to go is by a uh, speedboat. And some will say it's not safe, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to be late. So we took our luggage, put it on the speedboat. And it was around that evening time where the moon is a little bit out, but it's not too, it's too dark yet. And I began to look at how small that boat is. And even how smaller than I am. And how big the ocean is. Is anybody going to find us? The night is, the, the night is coming. If the, if, the, if the thing flip over, can anybody find us? In fact, what's inside of this ocean? How big is the animals inside of this ocean? What kind of teeth do they have? And I was just beginning to think of all these things. And then I began to think of how big my God is. And I realized my God is in control of every drop inside of that ocean. And no, I don't know how many drops in the ocean, but he knows where everyone is and he commands them where he wants them to go. I began to see the sky and he created everything, including myself, and I still have work to do for him. So I know I'm getting to the other side. Amen. Antidote for fear. When fear comes, you have to trust and know how big your God is. Yes. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, fear not. Yeah. Amen. Your God is big. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. We're still on two. Trust and know how big your God is. Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. The word of God says, Fear thou not. Say it again. Fear thou not. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. But do you believe it? Yes. yes. He will uphold you. All the millions of devils, witches, they cannot do anything when you're inside of the hand of God. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This message is coming because the devil has confused many people and many Christians that he's so big and God is small. The devil telling you, where is your God? He's not speaking to you, but every day I'm here. Look at this one. Look, I made something move here. All the, I'm here, I'm here. But he wants you to believe that God is so small. But I've come here to, to proclaim the word of God, that God is big, he's your ever-present help, in the time of your trouble, Amen. and his eyes never close. Amen. 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 Praise the living Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn to Job chapter 9, 5 through 8. Job chapter 9, 5 through 8. Amen. Which removeth the mountains, and they know not. Which overturn them in his anger. Have you ever seen or heard something about a mountain-like problem? God will overturn that mountain without asking the mountain's permission. 
So if there's a power boasting to be a mountain-like problem in your life, look to God. God will disgrace that mountain and make it be a plain. Amen? Amen. We shake it, the earth, out of her place. And the pillars, therefore, tremble. How big is your God? He doesn't need permission to do an earthquake. He doesn't need permission to make rain fall. You say, I'm, I'm on my way to work, I'm late. Oh, no, I don't want it to rain. Well, it's up to him. Amen. Sometimes we go for evangelism. We've done all the things. We've prepared everything. And it's now about to rain. The thunder comes. We say, Lord, I know you're in control, but we co we're cooperating. Cooperate with your own will for these people. And sometimes you see the hand of God. He will just control the rain until the moment we finish and the rain will come. Because he's the one in control. Praise the living Jesus Christ. He's in control that the flood won't overtake you or consume you. Amen. Say, my God is too big. The devil is too small. Amen. I work in the hospital and many of us work in the medical field. There was a woman that told me one time, said, you're brave. Said, you work in the hospital. I can never work in the hospital because there's too many evil spirits in the hospital. There's too many demons in the hospital. I can't work in the hospital. So, supposing God called you to work in the hospital, are you going to be afraid to work there? No. See, many people are afraid to go certain places to do certain things that God has told them because they're afraid of demons. But all these evil people will call people, go where they like, and they're not afraid. That's why they don't respect Christians. Because we're not bold. If God tells you to go, I don't care which demon, principality, or power, they couldn't kill you before, they can't kill you now. Amen? Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I wanted to ask the person, but I was being polite. I was thinking, supposing you're a gardener, isn't there spirits in the field? Amen. <laughs> supposing you're in the forest cutting down trees, is there not forest spirits there? Are you just going to hide inside of your house? Is there not spirits around? So what are you going to do? Be paralyzed with fear. Thinking the devil is everywhere. Even if he's everywhere, you have a firewall around you and he can't touch you without the permission of God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen? So don't be afraid. There was a lawyer that I knew and he was explaining to me that he had a case where he had to go to the mortuary to investigate the person that passed away. And the people, the mortuary attendants, I don't know what they call them, but mortuary, the person that opens them and does the autopsy. He was there, the body was open, and he was just eating rice like this. He didn't care. The smell was in the place. The man wanted to vomit, but the man was just there eating rice, not worrying about a thing in the world. Some Christian said, I'm not going there, there's evil spirits there. But supposing you have something to do. Supposing there's somebody there that God wants to bring you out. You're busy being afraid. Non-believers sitting there eating rice. Christians trembling. It's not supposed to be that way. Look at your neighbor and say, don't fear. Don't fear. Amen. Amen. Your God is big. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Psalm 23, popular, popular Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For God is with me. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you believe it? No, he's walking with you. He's inside of you. He's with you in the storm. Amen. The problem is, when you don't hear from God every day, and you're hearing about witches crying at night, or you're praying and you hear an owl or a bird, you say, oh, the devil's at it again. But you've been worshiping for an hour. You forgot about the entire worship for an hour because an owl was screaming. You think you're going to die. No. What I'm saying is very serious because some of you do it. You hear a noise, and you forget how big your God is because you heard the noise. Why can't you say that demon? You make that noise again. I'm going to wake up from another five hours and destroy. Amen? Amen. There was a man of God named Lester Sorrow. He went everywhere evangelizing. The devil was angry at him. He was sleeping. I don't know if he was evangelizing somewhere. And his bed, the window opened. And his bed moved to the other side, rolled to the other side. What would many people do? Oh, the devil, the devil. Oh, I'm a... God can't protect me. No. He said, devil, put the bed back. In the name of Jesus. The bed went back to the wall. And he said, go out 
in the name of Jesus. And he said, go out the same way you came in, in the name of Jesus. And the thing came out. Then he said, come back. Close that window. And close the window. And it went out. <laughs> Amen. Why are you so afraid you hear a noise? Somebody look at you there and say, stop being afraid. Your God is big. Amen. So number two, you have to trust in the Lord and know how big your God is. What did the doctor's report tell you? Is it bigger than God? You now begin to claim it into your life. There's an exercise that I used to always do and it always works. If you want to try it, it'll work. Put two plants. Put one B for blessed. Put one C for cursed. Every day bless one, every day curse one. And you'll see one will wither and one will be alive. Amen? Amen? Same way if you do to your children. You bless them, they'll be blessed. If you curse them, they'll be cursed. So, one will grow and the other one will wither. So if you get a bad report and now you yourself are claiming the thing in your life every day, what will happen? You have to know how big your God is. Amen? You have to speak life into dead situations. Amen? God called us to go heal the sick, to raise the dead. People don't, many people are not coming into Christianity because they feel there's no power. And all the occultic people are running mad everywhere, showing magic and signs and what, but no. You have to be bold as a lion. Amen? Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Say sickness in my life. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. You don't have to wait to the end of the message to get your deliverance. Your deliverance is right now. Amen. Amen. Say sickness in my life. What are you doing there? My God is too big. Get out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. Number three. You have to believe the promises of God. Amen. Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. We're going to go from 11 through 12. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11 through 12. Paul the Apostle says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know who I have believed. Do you know who you believe? And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. Amen. Say, my Lord is able to keep me. He is well able to keep you. He's not suffering. He's not wondering, ah, there's people on the other side of the world. How can I keep them and keep her at the same time? No. He's able to keep you. Amen. It's the devil that can't be everywhere at all times, but God can. It's the devil that has to hire agents to monitor different places because he's not God. God is in the other side of the universe right now holding up the biggest star that you can't even see by magnifying or by telescope. And he's not struggling to hold you up. Praise God. He's not struggling to solve your problem. The problem is, and this, if you don't get anything from this message, get this. The problem is, you're only worried about what the devil is doing. And you're not worrying about what God is doing. The billions of blessings you have, you only care about that bill that's coming up. All the blessings you saw on the way here. Did you see the trees? Did you see the star? Did you see the beauty of God? Amen. Amen. Our sister just had a grandson, newborn, beauty everywhere. Can you see it or are you only worried about that problem? That fear has crippled you that you can't even remember how God has blessed you. The only time you worship is when the pastor says, let's praise and worship. Worship God. Amen. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes you have to be bold and say, Lord, I'm going to worship you anyway because I know you're in control. Yes. Praise the living Jesus Christ. And the devil hates that because he puts all of his agents around somebody to make them fall. And when they come at 2 o'clock in the morning and they see you worshiping, they say, ah, 
we're, we're confused. Listen, didn't we smite them with something? Didn't they now begin to fight against themselves because they don't know why you're worshiping? I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. So worship God, whether in trials, whether in good season, whether or not. He is the King of Kings. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts. I'm going to go fast now because of time. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 9 through 10. Acts chapter 18, verse 9 through 10. Then spake the Lord, this is Paul the Apostle. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have so much people in this city. Amen. Amen. Why am I bringing the scripture up? You're not Paul the Apostle. The reason I'm bringing the scripture up is this. Because God may have given you some promises. Amen. Amen. And he's faithful to keep that promise. You may have had a dream or vision of the future of what God is going to do. If that thing delays... You have to still know that he will make it come to pass. Amen. If you faint not. Don't faint. Amen. As long as he said it and you know God is not a liar, he'll make it come to pass. Unless you go and say, Lord, why me? Jump off the roof. That one is not his responsibility. But if you stand for him, he must make it come to pass. If you now go somewhere, there's so I was in a place, and it was so it was 85% Muslims. It was me, my wife, and we were going to preach there. But we had to pray about it because I, you know, when you preach in a Muslim environment, you know that you know it can be dangerous. So you have to inquire from the Lord. You have to be responsible. So we inquired from the Lord, and the Lord told me in the night. So there's a chief. I don't know if you y'all know what is chief. Yes, there's a chief. And that chief is going to put his activities down and put yours up. So we now went to that chief, just as what God went before, talk to that chief. So we did our crusade, there was a mosque there, and right outside the mosque, the chief gave us, a Muslim chief, with, I don't know how many wives did he have, I don't know, gave us permission to do our crusade in front of the mosque. He said, I can't come, but you can do your crusade then. And all the other churches there said it was an open door for them to go preach in that place. So, as Paul the Apostle, when God promises you to do something, the fear should go away. If he tells you that this job I want you to go, I'll keep you safe, don't say, well, there's many spirits at that hospital. No. They have to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Let's see if we've been paying attention. What's number one antidote to fear? What's number two? Number three? Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Some of you are not talking. If I had a prize here for the right answer, everybody would be jack shouting. Right? <laughs> if I brought a laptop here, everybody, ah, I know. Okay, praise God. Maybe I'll start to bring. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's number three. Believe. The promises of God. Many promises of God are in the word of God. God has also promised you some things. Number four is love. Somebody say love. love. How can love be an antidote for fear? Well, let's find out. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 18. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 18. 18 through 19. The word of God says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love, what? Casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. For we love him because he first loved us. Amen. How does that scripture comfort you? Let me explain. The king of kings, the one that created you in his own image, the Alpha and the Omega, he sees the invisible. He sees in darkness. Created you. 
and he loved you first before you loved him. What does that mean? Amen. It means you didn't do anything for him. In fact, you were a filthy sinner and he still loved you. So somebody that's a lion of the tribe of Judah that has all the power loves you so much. Which witch is just going to come attack you anyhow when he loves you that much? That power will fall down and die. Amen. He takes care of us. He loves us. And that love he has for us, you know he's protecting you. Yes. Cast out all fear. Amen. 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 When you see a child, when the parent is near, they're okay. The parent begins to go, they cry. Why? Because they know that parent will do anything for that child. Amen. Amen. There was a mother that was telling me a story when her, when her son was young. You know how... Some mothers like to embarrass their children when they get older, right? Tell stories about their children, amen? And she said, you know, the, you know she said, my son, you know, uh, the, the little things that the children um, uh, go in that rolls around, they can walk in, you know? I don't know what they call it. Walker. walker, amen. Praise God. So as she's cooking, the son will be walking around in the kitchen. But when she goes around, the son begins to cry and begins to follow when she sees the mom, she's okay. Well, as long as the son has an eye view of the mother, he's fine. Because he knows that mother, anything that comes against that child, that mother's going to rage. Amen. But what about God that creates heaven and earth? That loves you. That created the moon and the stars. That even the breath that you're breathing is him. How much that love that he has for you, you shouldn't be afraid. Amen. That type of love he has for you? No. Praise God. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, it's not easy for a young lion to die unless the father kills him. Because no animal, hyena, is crazy enough to go towards that little, little lion. Because the lion will destroy him. Amen? The mother or the father. So what about the lion of the tribe of Judah? Somebody coming near his children. No. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't fear. Don't fear. Our God is too big. Our God is too big. I want to tell you about the love of God. John chapter 10, verse 10 through 15. The love of God. The love. You have to know that God loves you. He's not just going to abandon you. You have to know it with your whole being. John chapter 10. 10 through 15. I'm going to read all. John chapter 10, 10 through 15. The thief cometh not for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Somebody say life. life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. And fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is in hireling and careth not for the sheep. Let me explain. Somebody is getting minimum wage to be a security guard somewhere, and they give him a flashlight. And armed robbers come with AK 47. What is he going to do? Say, I know my job, I'm going to protect this place. No, he's going to run. Say, it's not worth it. Amen? Amen? Verse 14 says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of my sheep. Amen. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Someone that can't die, that lives forever, is protecting you and you're a sheep. Who's going to kill you? Amen. Unless it's your time to go, you're not going to go. In Jesus' name. Yes. Someone that's created of heaven and earth that can't die, that promises everlasting life, is saying, I'm willing to die for my sheep. Nobody's going to try that. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. This message is coming. You say this is common sense. No, because many people are worried about what the devil is doing all the time. You're worried about what the devil is doing all the time. I get so many calls. Oh, the devil's at it again. But what did God do? 
Never mind that. The devil's at it again. What? You're giving him too much. That's what he wanted in the first place. He wanted glory. He wanted somebody to bow down and worship him, and you're doing it unconsciously. Why did he get kicked out of heaven? He said, I want to be like the most high God. You want to make him like the most high God? Because everything is the devil? When you don't want to give glory to God? You need to stop it. Take that thing out of your mouth. The devil likes when you call his name. Stop calling his name. And unless you're binding him, stop calling him all the time. Which, what witches and wizards when the line of the tribe of Judah is there? Angels outside of your house. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's how much God loves you. As I was sitting right there before, we, before I came up, the Lord told me, make sure you tell them how much I love them. That's why I spend time. He loves you. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 says, and this is the scripture I'm going to end with. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive evermore. Somebody say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Somebody that loves you so much has the keys to your life. It's going to protect you. It's not like us that protecting our keys so we can get in the house. Protecting your key because you got a new car. No, his love is much greater. And when a Christian does not have to be afraid of death. Because death in Christ is gain. It's everlasting life with the Father. There was an evangelist named John Hyde. He gave his life to Jesus at 19 years old. He was on fire for God. He's the one that said, give me souls or I die. Yes. There was all he did was pray. He prayed so much that he even had health problems because of praying. He prayed so much, his throat began to be mutated. He prayed and he prayed so much, he would go into places where other men of God would not survive. As he comes into a town, the school teacher, I mean the school children inside of class begin to cry, say, I want to give my life to Jesus. The teachers now go to the other classroom. Then they say, the other one say, I want to give my life to Jesus. And the man hasn't even preached yet. He's just coming in town. The man that prayed and prayed. He said three words one time in a crusade and so the whole place got delivered and saved. God took him at 47 years old. You say, ah, why is God so terrible to take him at 47 years old? God is not terrible. He did what he was supposed to do and his time was up and God took him. Amen? Amen. A Christian doesn't have to be afraid of death. He won more souls than many people win in their five lifetimes. So God took him to himself to be with him for everlasting. So the devil, next time he says, I'm going to kill you, are you going to be afraid? First of all, he's been stripped of that power. He's been stripped of that power to kill. Tell him, Jesus has the keys to my life. Shut up. Get out. And all kind of prayers you can pray on his head. Amen? Just stop calling his name. Pray on. Amen? Praise God. An evangelist that was uh, assistant to A.A. Allen, he was telling a story. He now, A.A. A. Allen was a, 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 evan, a healing evangelist. And one day he told his assistant, there was a woman that was possessed with the devil. And they prayed for him and that devil came out. But the woman probably went back into sin and then followed them to another crusade. And they can tell she's more, she's more loaded with seven more spirits. So he looked at the evangelist, A.A. A. Allen, and said, oh, you have plenty of work to do. He said, no, you're going to do it. He said, what, me? Say, you're the man. Say, no, I can't pray for all these people's uh, healing. You could take them into that room and pray. And this was the story. When that demon began to manifest, a the demon first tried to make him afraid. When he now said, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ has stripped you of your power 2,000 years ago. You know what that de the demon said? The demon says, don't say it so loud. People don't know. <laughs> What am I trying to tell you? That voice that tells you don't come to church. So you don't hear this message. How many people you say would have should have heard this message? And you know. That voice that tells you, 
Don't go listen to the word of God. Go sleep. Go do something else. Is that voice those demons are saying? I don't want you to be um, free. Don't tell them that I'm bigger. Don't tell them God is bigger. Don't tell them that that's stripped of their power. And he cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell the devil, Jesus Christ has stripped you of your power. You're saying it like you don't believe it. Say, devil, Jesus Christ has stripped you of your power. 2,000 years ago. You want to trouble my life? Get out! In the name of Jesus Christ. Fear not. Amen. If you're here and you're ready to give your life to Jesus Christ, once and for all, you're tired of all the fear and torment, I want you to repeat after me loud and clear. Say, Jesus Christ, Jesus come, into my life come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Jesus Christ, take complete control of my life. Today and forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Right now, bow your head 10, 20, 30 seconds and begin to ask God for mercy before we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, have mercy. Wash us clean. That lack of faith, Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever we fell short, have mercy, Lord. Wash us clean by your precious blood. In the name of Jesus. Don't justify yourself. Don't have any pride. Just tell God, I'm sorry. You may call the devil's name day and night, worry about what the devil's doing and forgetting what God is doing. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're talking about witches and wizards all the time, but you can't tell the devils how big God is. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to our feet like soldiers. Now that you know how big your God is, how fast is your deliverance going to come? Right away. Amen? Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Amen. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power. Power. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is the deliverance in the blood of Jesus. I am healed in the blood of Jesus. I am free in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. You're going to pray like this. Say every strange voice calling me to any trap. I will not answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any voice. Washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To every evil voice, every evil voice. accusing me of my past, of my shut past. up. Shut up. Ah! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil voice, accusing me of my past.
untimely death. I render you powerless. Jesus Christ has already stripped the devil of his power. Why are you afraid? You're going to pray loud and clear. Say every spirit of untimely death. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. Therefore you will not come to my house. In the name of Jesus Christ. My children. My house. My vehicle. My workplace. Is cleansed with the blood of Jesus. You shall pass by. You shall not enter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of untimely death. Is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. You need to know how big your God is. You need to know the authority you have. In the name of Jesus. Why can't you claim it? Why can't you decree it? Every spirit of untimely death. I cancel it. Jesus. Every evil programming, I cancel it in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, every evil programming on the earth, in the waters, I cancel it by fire. I cancel it by fire. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of untimely death, I bind you. I curse you. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we pray. Holy Ghost, I need a change by fire. Holy Ghost, I need a change by fire. I need a change by fire. I need a change by. I need a change by. I need a change by. I need a change. 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 Holy Ghost, I need a change by fire. Holy Ghost, I need a change by fire. situation for the best. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's your father. He's your friend. You can ask him. Oh God, my father, look at my situation. Change my situation for the best. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone here. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we cry out to you, Lord, change that situation for the best. Jesus, that stubborn stronghold, I break it out of your life. That stubborn stronghold, I break it out of your life. Every strong man challenging your deliverance, I cut them down with the battle acts of God. In the name of Jesus, that mountain that's before you, I command it to become a plain. In the name of Jesus, Christ, oh God, my Father, change their situation for the best. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. Amen. We're going to pray like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have no other God but you. Appear in my situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, tell the Lord, I have no other God but you. If you don't deliver me, I'm not going anywhere. I have no other God that I serve. In the name of Jesus Christ, I need you. Appear in my situation. The miracle I need. The sign and wonder I need. I'm not going anywhere. Cry out to him. Say, I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. I will not leave here, Lord, until you bless me. Oh, God, here I am. Look at my situation. I have no other God. I have no other place to go. You are my daddy. You are my friend. I can't do without you. In the name of Jesus, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, my father. Look at your children. Crying out to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Answer them. That your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're going to you're going to pray and decree like this. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, every curse against me, every curse against my family. Before we pray, do you believe that God is big enough to break that nonsense curse? Yes. So why are you worried about it? Some of you right now, I'm stopping the prayer because you're praying thinking that, well, God maybe will do it, the devil won't. No, 
God is big. He's going to do it. You're going to walk out of here and eat as not cursed again. And then, praise the living Jesus Christ. You're going to pray like this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, every curse against me, every curse against my family, I break it. Jesus Christ. Oh, single, single, pray. 